What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today we're back at Dealers Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City for another walk around and test drive. Let's jump into this video today and see what we can find. Now how this ended up here is beyond me. This is a brand new Lexus RX 350. It's a 2023. It's only got 8,000 miles on the odometer and the color some of you are probably going to dislike it, but I actually really love the color and I have no idea what to even call it. It almost looks like a copper with some rose to it. I, I, very, very interesting color. I'll get you guys up close there so you could really kind of take that in and appreciate it. It is an absolutely stunning color. I noticed the color before I even realized what this thing was. It's beautiful. It is really beautiful. And here you go, you can see right there, 2023 with 8,777 miles on the odometer. Triple sevens, that means it's lucky. This is definitely something that's outside of my budget, but I figure it doesn't hurt just to take a, take a look at it, right? Lots of angles on this thing, man. It's absolutely gorgeous, really. Let's take a look at the interior, see what they got going on in there. really nice smells brand new too of course the back seat's not what everybody's interested in everybody wants to know what's going on up front because this is the business end of things being very careful not to hit the doors on anything take a look at these beautiful seats wow this looks like a really nice place to be look at that giant screen very driver centric we're going to jump over to the driver's side, guys. I want to see more of this. This thing is absolutely stunning. All right. Again, everything is in perfect condition. Seats are perfect. Headliner. You've got the sunroof. And this is where I want to be. Oh, right here. Very nice. All right, let's go ahead and fire this one up. Let's see what all comes to life in here. Oh, wow. Let's turn that radio down. And continue. Gauges. Runs perfect. I can't help but wonder what's under the hood of this. Is it a V6? Or have they gone down to like a little turbo four banger or something? I would hope that they they still have a V6 in these things. I'm going to adjust my seat just a little bit. Get myself to where, kind of where I want to be. And uh, how do you get to navigation on this? I guess it's that button right there. Let's see what the nav looks like. Yeah, I don't care about any of this. Good Lord. And look at the look how nice this is when you adjust the temperature controls. This is this is really clean, guys. And I'm not a I'm not a big Lexus fan, but this is this is pretty nice. I'd like to figure out how to get back to the main menu um, because this is obviously climate. All of this here is climate. What I don't understand is how do I how do I get back to the main menu parking you've got your camera you've got a couple usb c's over here i don't know what this thing is this is probably for like uh self-driving it's probably got some kind of adaptive cruise and this is probably tracking your eyeballs to make sure you're paying attention you got your trip and everything over here seat memories you've got three of those trunk uh, hatch release and fuel there's all of your controls for the windows and your power mirrors. But again, there's a screen here, but I can't, I can't figure out how to actually get into it. Like there's the radio, that's great, but the rest of the screen is just black. There's, yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I don't, I don't know how to get, <laughs> I don't know how to get into it. Um, but like I wanted to see the navigation and stuff and I can't, uh, I can't see anything. So I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to see if maybe firing it back up will bring it back to life. Maybe it'll let us... Yeah, there we go. All right, that's nice. Now, can we... 
can we just, I just want to see what the navigation screen looks like. Experience Drive Connect, subscribe. Oh, I've got to subscribe to something. Favorites, yeah, so I guess for the this fancy navigation, you've got to have a subscription. I hate that kind of stuff. All right. Well, there's your fuel economy and all of that good stuff. Looks like average fuel economy is 23 miles a gallon. That's not too bad, guys. That's not too bad. Let's pop the hood and see what they're working with under there. And the, the door, that's interesting. So here's your door handle. I reached out, and I guess that's an emergency release to pull it twice, or you push it in and it's like electronic? Yeah, okay. That's, that's different. Try not to hit any of the other cars over here. Let's pop this hood. Obviously, we don't need to check windows or anything. Everything is going to work on this. And this color. Did I mention how much I really, really love this color? Oh, oh my gosh. It's a four banger. They did it. It's a, it's a turbo four, guys. Well, that's, that's very disappointing. I mean, again, this is definitely outside of what I'd be willing to spend right now on a on a new toy, a new car, or whatever. Let's see what size it is. Probably like a little two liter. It's a 2.4. So at least it's a decent size four cylinder. 2.4 liter turbo. Probably puts out some decent horsepower being a 2.4 liter. I was hoping it wasn't gonna be something tiny like a 1.8, 2.0 liter. Makes you wonder though, why is this thing here when it only has, it has less than 9,000 miles on the odometer guys. Why is this thing sitting here right now? I don't know. I like it. This is not one I'm going to test drive. You know, I'm honestly, if it had the V6, I'd have been a little more interested in seeing what it was like. But being a turbo four, I'm, I'm just, no, we're, we're going to pass. It seems a lot of you guys like Cadillacs and so do I. So here's a 2023 XT4. We're in the uh, rental car section. This is one of my favorite places to be because you find all the average cars that you would find it, well, any rental car company and also at almost every car dealership around the country. These are the most common vehicles that you're ever going to find. And because they're rental cars, they're generally discounted pretty nicely. I mean, compared to retail, keep in mind, that's why this is a wholesale auction, a dealer auction, right? Uh, hopefully you can get a better deal here than you're going to get on a retail lot. With that said, um, rental cars are one of those hit or miss type of things, you know, Typically, they're not treated the best, even though they are maintained. They keep the oil changed and tires rotated and all that good stuff. Generally speaking, they do. It's just the, the people that drive them don't tend to take the best care of them. You know, they, <laughs> they're just not treated well. This one has low miles. It's an Avis rent-a-car, even still says $450 cleaning fee, no smoking. You got, uh, it, really? This is a Cadillac? Ugh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I've never seen one of these before. I, I don't think I have. I don't think I've looked at one of these before, but this is not... This is not impressive to me at all. I mean, it looks good from the outside. Lots of sharp angles. You know, it's a 350T, so it's probably a little tiny turbo four. You know, it's got decent room. It's, it's definitely not the biggest. But it's all right. Uh, I'm just, I'm not impressed with the interior. I, I really expected a newer Cadillac would have a lot more to offer than this. Um, okay, you've got a nice little animation screen. That's good. I think it looks cheap. You know what the problem is? I've been in too many Mercedes lately. Yeah, that's... This is, this sounds like a little four banger. It's a, it sounds like a little tiny four cylinder guys. Ugh. I guess that's just the way of the future. You got a heads up display up there. Tiny one, it's a little bitty. I don't know what it displays other than maybe how fast you're going. And you've got your uh, instrument cluster right here, which is very basic. It's not digital at all. Everything is analog. It's a 2023 man. It's only got 20,000 miles on it. The idle sounds kind of erratic. This thing's this thing's got the idle that my my Buick Grand National has, kind of all over the place. The engine just sounds a little. Blah, 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 blah. 
I think I think it's figuring it out though. And there's your infotainment center, which I think this is the worst part of the whole Cadillac. What is this? This all looks like an afterthought. You know what I mean? It's like they stuck the screen in there and they're like they were like, what are we gonna do now? So they just pushed oh that's not even soft touch. This is that's hard plastic. No, I I, I don't like this. I, I was gonna take this one for a ride, guys. I was I was interested in checking this one out, but I'll be honest with you, this this is kinda this kinda sucks. And then this weird shifter. Oh, and my butt just vibrated. See, that's another thing I don't like. Some people love that it does that. I don't like things tickling my butt. You know what I mean? That's not my style. It bothers me. You know, I'm sitting here minding my own business, and the next thing I know, something's like grabbing on my butt. You know, the bit, bit. No. <laughs> no. No, thank you. I will pass on that. I'm, I'm sure there's somewhere that you can, uh, you can turn. I hope there's somewhere that you can turn that off, because that would get... Yeah, there it goes again. As you start approaching, I understand the reason for it. You know, it's to get your attention. As you start getting too close to something, the car starts really tickling your butt because it figures that's going to get anybody's attention, right? And usually not in a good way, so it gets you to pay attention. For me though, that, that that's not the that's not the way to do it. I'm not I'm not good with that. Let's pop the hood real quick. Like I said, I already know it's going to be some some teeny tiny little little four banger oh they don't give you a hood release anymore i'm kidding it's it's right there i think like i said guys maybe i'm just a little spoiled you know i've gotten i've gotten too spoiled by the bmws the cadillacs and mercedes did i say cadillac maybe old cadillacs not this one this one's not going to spoil you yeah see it's a tiny little tiny little front wheel drive engine huh what size is it? 2.0 liter. Ugh. Yeah, barf. How about a 2022 Chrysler Pacifica minivan? And I love this gray color. I can't remember the name of it. Somebody's going to comment down below and say what the color is. But I had a Jeep, my Jeep Wrangler, if I remember correctly, was the same color. I actually really, really like this color. So this is a, it's another rental. It's a 2022. It's only got 31,000 miles on the odometer. We're gonna take a quick peek at this. It's got a little bit of damage, which means it should go just a little bit cheaper. But keep in mind, this is still very, very new. Look at that interior. This actually looks nicer than the Cadillac, and it's a minivan. <laughs> I mean, that's that's really saying something. Let's see if the door operates. It does, and I'm gonna show you the damage down there in a minute, which is why I'm looking at this one, because there's about 10 of these out here but the rest of them actually look better than this. So I'm looking at this one because I'm hoping with body damage it might go a little bit cheaper. Looks like you fold this. Okay, so you pull this and that's how you get in. Plenty of room and it's got stow and go seating. I didn't even know stow and go existed in these. Look at that. And then you just push it back, I guess. Yeah. And then what, you push this button to close it? Very nice. Yeah, I like this for a minivan anyway. Here's the damage. It's not anything crazy, but I mean, there is scrapage and in fact, there's some paint peeling right there. So again, rental car things, guys. The rest of it, however, looks pretty good. Can we pop this as electronic? It's actually, this is actually really nice. This beats the heck out of that Cadillac. And I bet this got a V6 under the hood. Lots of room, love that third row seating and you just push it down or is there a button right there and then get out of its way it's like a handicap backup beep it's uh, it's got excellent tires i don't know what happened there but a little bit of damage there as well yeah these vehicles typically not always you got to check them out but for the most part, these rental vehicles, guys, uh, these are, they call them frontline ready, which means basically you got nothing to do to them. You get in them and you sell them. You put them on your, on your lot for sale. They are turnkey, run and drive. They generally will not need anything. They'll have brand new tires and they've got low miles. Um, the only downside to these that I have found, because I've been trying to buy some of these rental cars for months, <laughs> months, 
And uh, the only real downside that I see to them, by the way, they maintain their warranty. Um, you still have your full warranty on these as well, which is really awesome. Um, they go for, for big money. Um, and that's the unfortunate side of it is because they're low miles, they're relatively new, they still have a warranty and most of them are ready to go. This one even has a full tank of gas. Um, because of that, well, they want top dollar for these guys. So you're, you're going to pay for these. It's going to cost you more money up front. And knowing my luck, I could buy something practically brand new like this and still lose money. You know, even buying from the auto auction, I would still lose money on it when we were done. I'm going to put up a seatbelt on real quick, and I think we're going to take this one for a ride. I really like the displays in this. I'm telling you, I know that the Cadillac is a luxury brand and Chrysler is not, but I, I'm telling you right now, just take a look at this compared to that Cadillac we were just in. This is this is far superior. And this is a minivan. This It's a minivan. This thing is far better, far nicer. You want to talk about soft. That steering wheel is super soft. I'm sure there's a lot of hard yeah, see, hard hard plastics, and is this soft? At least this is soft touch, though. That's nice and cushy, and the steering wheel is really, it's really thick, really beefy, and, and very soft. This is, it, surprisingly, this is a really nice place to be for being a minivan. I think we're going to take this one out for a spin. We're going to pop the hood, and I'm going to hope and pray that we find a V6 under here, because that's what it, that's what it should be. Pentastar 3.6 liter, bingo, I told you guys. Yeah, I knew it. Dodge has got you covered, man. They know what people need. They need a V6, they don't need a turbo four cylinder. Who cares about a, who cares about 35 miles a gallon? Nobody wants that these days. No, I'm kidding, everybody wants that. Let me get buckled up, guys. We're gonna take this one for a quick ride. All right, are you guys ready to take it for a ride? I'm definitely interested to see how this thing is gonna handle. So far, very nice. This is very comfortable. You'd never know it, you know what I mean? You would never know it. Solid riding vehicle. All right, we're at the test track. I'm gonna give it a little throttle and see how it does. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. The sound and the feel of a naturally aspirated V6. That Chrysler got it right on this one. Yep, they got it right on this one. Let's see if we can flip this thing around without having to pull a three-point turn. Because this is this is a very big vehicle, guys. No way. Not a problem. All right, I'm going to get you guys down here on the instrument cluster where you can see what's going on a little bit better. Let's give her the beans. And 60. Brakes. Very nice, very nice. Look, it's got plenty of get up and go. Still very comfortable, very manageable. Holds itself great on the road. It's, it's big, it's big, it's heavy. I would absolutely drive one of these. Every day of the week would not bother me one bit. All right, I got it back in its parking spot. This is a... Uh... This is definitely decent. I thought we were going to have a little bit of a hard time parking it because of how big and bulky it is, but I'll be honest with you, it wasn't that difficult to park. We got it in there real nice. Let me go look around, see what else we can find out here. So as I've said before, this is, uh, this is all rental cars, every single one of them, and they've got a ton of them out here, guys, and just about everything that you could imagine, anything you would be looking for. It's, it's sitting out here on this lot. Um, I usually don't do too much looking at the rental cars unless there's something that just really catches my eye because like I said, uh, the competition for these types of vehicles is pretty stiff and you're gonna pay top dollar to get your hands on these. There's a nice little Jag right there, F-Pace. This one actually looks pretty decent. <sighs> Maybe not, hold on. This isn't the one from last week, is it? Please tell me it's not. 
the one where somebody had cut the mufflers. It's a 2020, yeah, 30T, 85,000 miles. I think this is, I think this is the one from last week. We're gonna check this out real quick. Uh, cracked windshield. Yeah, I think this is it. Dang it. Um, if I remember right, when you fire this one up, it sounds like someone cut the mufflers off of it. This is, ooh, and it smells like ass. Wow. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Yeah, this is that little four-cylinder from last week, and I just, I absolutely hated it. <laughs> and I already knew that Jessica wouldn't like it at all. So we'll continue on from that one, guys. There may not be much else over here worth looking at, but I'll go ahead and walk you guys through so you can see the kind of vehicles that are sitting out here for sale. There's a ton of them, guys. Uh, absolute ton of them. I like that little Nissan. What is that, an Ultima? An Ultima SR 2023? Let's take a quick peek at this one real quick. Can't have any miles on it. Maybe it was a demo car. It's only got 21,000 miles on the odometer. Tinted windows. Leather interior. All right. I'll tell you something though. Immediately, I smell, I smell moisture. It's got the floor mats back here in the back. Lots of air fresheners. I'm noticing that too. Lots, lots of, lots of air fresheners in this one. See, there's more on the, there's more on the floor right there. There's more in the seat right there. There's more on the floor down there. It smells like mildew or mold. That's what it smells like. It smells really bad. Really, really bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with this one. Something, something's off on this one, guys. So we're gonna walk away from this one. I think that's gonna about wrap it up for this side of the lot. And of course you got some of your damaged ones too. Over here is all your Hertz. And uh, they're usually self-insured. So they'll fix the cars themselves. And uh, a lot of times when you buy a car like this, it's all smashed up like this. They're actually a clean title. They're not salvaged or totaled because these rental car companies, they, they insure themselves. So none of this stuff gets written off to an insurance company because they are their own insurance company. So if it's wrecked too bad, they typically just send it to auction on a clean title. Someone else can buy it, they can fix it up. And truthfully, you never know that it was in a wreck like this, which, you know, for some people may not necessarily be a good thing, but for the people that are buying these for really cheap, slapping them back together and selling them for a profit, well, they're making out like bandits. Now for the thumbnail, how about a 1987 Porsche 944 Turbo? This thing's probably worth a little bit of money. It actually looks really, really good. It's got a big wing, you've got ground effects. I like this a lot. Manual transmission, of course, because that's the only way to do it, right? And look at those wheels. Tell me these wheels are not, I don't know. They just, they really make the car. These are the right wheels for this car. It looks phenomenal. You got your little scoop right there. Uh, the paint, you know, there's definitely some cracks and chips and some peeling so the paint's not perfect but i mean it's an old car for me this would be a fun toy it's got the big sunroof let's take a look at this interior hopefully the dash is intact well i'm not going to rip that off to look under it but i mean the interior really looks to be in good shape seats are in good condition looking in the back here looks to be in pretty good shape back there as well we'll go to the driver's side of things and take a look at the instrument cluster same thing over here very nice little on the small side it looks like it was recently repainted because they've got overspray on just about everything and the door panel here is glued together for the window switches you know, like I said, it's not perfect, guys. 118,000 miles on the odometer. I love these gauges. This gauge cluster is phenomenal. You got a gauge pod right here for boost. 
and oil temperature. The gear selector, gear shifter I should say, real nice. Feels like a kind of a short throw style of shifter. Let's see if it'll run. Oh, is it dead? It's dead. Oh. Yeah, she's dead. Dead as a doornail. I wonder if somebody left the lights on or something. Because the key's not in it and it's just sitting here dinging. Well, the lights are not on. No. Let's see if I can find a hood release for this. I'm assuming it's, well, I assume wrong. Maybe you guys can see it. Ah, there it is, I think, right there. Door's a little hard to close, but otherwise not too bad. Beautiful car. Look at that. It's very clean. It looks like somebody took pretty good care of it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just filming it. I'm not oh, doing okay. anything with it. Well, that's like it wasn't supposed to be sitting here. So that's okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to drive it or nothing. Well, no, it's fine. It just it wasn't gonna be in the. How seat. much did it go for? Uh, ten eight. Damn. So, All right. Sold online to somebody in Illinois. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. All right. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. <laughs> All right. Well, it's sold. So uh, about ten eight is what it went for. I don't know, man. You guys have to tell me what you think it's worth. Apparently, it sold online before the auction, so it's not even it's not even up for grabs anymore. I don't know. I think 108 might have been a little high for me. I would have I would have done 10. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Maybe 8500. I don't know what these things are worth, but I think it would have been fun to have. Unfortunately, these cars just aren't uh well, they're not particularly fast, and I'm not so sure that this is all that sought after. You guys have to tell me. I'm not a Porsche guy, but overall, man, she really is a pretty slick looking car. All right, guys, this is Repo Row, and these used to be full of cars from the Key, but that's not the case anymore. Looks like they've reorganized things out here just a little bit. So we're gonna kind of go through and figure out how many cars are here, and we've got several credit unions. There's a lot. This is a 2019 Honda and it's only got 4,000 miles on it, repossessed. 2019 Honda, 36,000 miles, repossessed. All right, the BMW over there doesn't count, so we're at two, three, four, five, six, ouch. Wow, seven, golly. <laughs> Looks like they hit this one, guys. Wow. Um, yeah, eight, nine, ten. You see, some of these still have the, a lot of these still have the temp tags on them. February of 2023. That's when this was purchased in February, and they still got temp tags on it. Eight of 2023. Here's another one. I mean, what are we looking at, guys? One, two, and there's got to be at least 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, there's 12 of these sitting right here. Now, I'm not interested in any of these, and I don't know what over here is smoking, but something smells like it's burning oil. This might be 13. This might be a repossession, too. Let's walk up and see. Yes, yeah, it's another. Uh, so, 13. Unlucky number. 13. A lot of repos sitting right there. That's not all the repos, guys. I guarantee you, once we get up to the front of the lot, way out yonder, there's going to be even more. Now we're getting into the fleet vehicles, and I, I want to check one of these out. Obviously, I don't, have, uh, I don't have the budget for something like this right now, nor would I want something like this right now. But these would make great conversion vehicles, right? Like camping or overlanding type of vehicles. A little on the big side. If I'm being honest, they're, they're a little big, but I, I think you could probably make them work. These are diesels. These were obviously delivery vehicles. Um, 2021 with only 7,000 miles on the odometer. Like what were you, what were you delivering in this? I, I don't know. I'm not so sure this was a delivery vehicle, guys. This thing looks, it actually looks kind of crazy. Let's see what it looks like in the back. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is definitely a work truck only 7,000 miles though. like it makes you wonder what 
what were you doing with this? What is all of this stuff? Um, e n d e r d e l. Um, Ender Ender Enderdel. I'm assuming some kind of an energy company. I I don't know. I don't know what any of this is. I'll tell you this. I ain't gonna touch it. <laughs> that looks like a large power wire. So you probably want to leave that kind of stuff alone. It does make you wonder though, like what were these being used for? And I still think with even you know you got to take all this crap out. But you could really make a hell of a. Uh, oh my god that's heavy i think that's supposed to open itself <laughs> i'm guessing this is dead oh my goodness wow okay um interesting you got water supply in here too hot and cold water um looks like that one's broken <laughs> looks like they use some shark bites you got some valves that are not connected to anything um wash rinse and sanitize Oh, all right. You know what this was? Now, now I get it. I'm. Just, I, I didn't even look around. I walked right to the sink, and I was like, "This looks like it was some kind of a food truck." <laughs> Duh. Yeah, looks like that's exactly what it was. It was a food truck. I'm not sure where you served people out of, because I don't see any serving windows. But you got all your little. I guess these are like keep hot type things right here. Lots of uh, power control centers. Lots of electricity, emergency shutoff button. You've got a screen right here, presumably for orders that are coming in. Looks like you got maybe some kind of a little router right there as well. And uh, I don't know what you'd put up here. Maybe dishes or something like that. I don't know what goes here either. What is this, like a microwave or deep fryer? That'd be my guess, some kind of a, of a fryer. And I'm assuming you got refrigeration units right here. Oh, these have a uh, these have special locks on them, but I'm assuming this is some kind of uh, freezer, refrigeration units, lots of stainless, another sink, and uh, you know here's where all the business happens right here. Again, all fleece uh, fleece all fleet lease type of vehicles right here, guys. Scoot that seat back. I'm curious. If this thing has any juice because that door sure didn't want to open let's sit down and start engine fired right up i thought maybe it was dead uh looks like you've got an emergency shutoff switch right here too it's kind of nice i don't know looks like refrigeration running around over your head too keep volume respectful <laughs> okay all right this is actually not too bad guys i <laughs> kind of like this really nice nice screen and as per all mercedes you got your little track pads on each side right here you know so you can kind of zoom around this thing is like brand new i mean this is like this is like brand new let's shut it down a little, oh a bag of keys please repeat yeah let's not and uh wonder what's in here can't get into it but it looks like you got a door so you can separate you know the front from the back that's kind of nice and you can see right through it yeah man this is cool guys really cool it'd be even cooler though if this thing would close itself oh wait 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 there we go now we should just be able to pull it no? Do we push that button? Oh, great. There we go. Please. Is it jammed? What is happening? Yeah, it's... That door's a little tweaked, I think. There it goes. I don't know. Kind of cool. Um... Great for a food service person, but again, I don't know where they were serving orders from because there's, you know, no serving window. But if I'm wrong and that's not what it is, definitely comment below and t 
tell me what you think it is because <laughs> I'm looking at it and I don't know what else it could possibly be. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my videos. I truly appreciate it. If you enjoy them, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed and definitely drop your comments down below the video. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.